In today's video, we're gonna shoot tethered to an iPad. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to do a video that has been uh, requested a number of times, by far the most popular question that I get, which is how do you tether to an iPad? You guys seem to be really interested in this. Uh, my two most popular and most watched videos are all around tethering. So today I'm gonna show you how I tether to an iPad. Now the way that I'm gonna show you is the way that I like to do it. Uh, there are a number of solutions to do this. Uh, certainly, if you were to ask me the same question five, six years ago, you only had really one uh, product, which I think was the Cam Ranger. Uh, but today, there's a number of solutions from Cam Ranger, uh, from Tether Tools, there's another one called Arsenal. Uh, but the way that I'm going to show you today is using a product called Capture One, which comes with another product called Capture Pilot. And the reason I'm using Capture One is that when you rent a studio, a high-end studio, you're going to find that most of them are going to be using Capture One. And the reason for that is that Capture One is way more geared to work with some of the higher end cameras. So things such as Hazelblad and Face Ones, they are all designed to work with Capture One. They don't necessarily work with Lightroom. And so for that reason, because most high end cameras are Capture One, that's what you're gonna find in most studios. So if you wanna follow along, you're gonna need a few things. Uh, the first one, obviously, you're going to need a copy of Capture One, so just a regular copy will do. Uh, the other thing is you're going to need some sort of smart device. This, this could be your phone, I keep saying iPad, but it could be an iPad, it could be an Android tablet, uh, but it can be a phone as well, as long as there's some sort of uh, device that you can download an app from an app store, the Android app store or the Apple app store. Uh, the other thing you're gonna need is a tether cable. Now, this is a USB cable and you're going to plug this cable from your uh, camera and you're going to plug it into your computer. Now, I know that we are tethering to an iPad, but the iPad itself is going to tether to the computer, not directly to the camera. And that's one of the reasons why we use Capture One. We're already in that world of Capture One uh, because we want the images to be stored there. So all we're doing is just extending the use of the application. So the first thing we need to do is plug your camera to the computer using a USB cable. So we're gonna do that now, and then I'm gonna jump into Capture One and I'm gonna show you how this works. Okay, so here we are inside of Capture One. And as you can see, my camera is already connected. I've taken a picture here of my shelf. You can see the camera information here on the left-hand side. And uh, so on the screen, we are in the capture uh, module of um, Capture One. And on this left-hand side here, if you look all the way down to the bottom, you've got the Capture Pilot section, okay? I've just closed it. We're just going to open that up again. Um, and you see a few different things, a few different options in here. You've got basic mobile web. So let's just run down through some of the basic stuff in here. We won't go through uh, too much detail, but we'll, we'll gi I'll give you enough detail to, to, um, to implement it and actually use it yourself. So uh, folder, this is just, um, you want to remain this on all images. This is basically what images will be transmitted over to the iPad um, when 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 you take a photograph, uh, I say all images, or you can say recent captures. So I'll just leave that on all images. I'm gonna give it a name in here, so let's just call it testing. And then a password if you need to um, have a password for obvious reasons, uh, you don't want somebody connecting from you know the house next door and seeing your photos. So if, you, if, uh, if it's something private, you put a password in there. I'm not gonna do this, because yeah, at the moment it's just a demo. And here uh, it's saying, would you like to push the uh, images out to mobile and web or you can just select one of those specific ones uh, we're going to do mobile and web and i'll show you the difference between the two of them uh, as we go along um, these are the different uh, mobile uh, options and, and and just to clarify when you when it says mobile uh, there is an app that you need to download which is the capture pilot app and you can get that it's free and you get that from any of the app stores like the apple or the android ones and uh, and this, if you are using the app, uh, this, these are the settings for that. If on the web, uh, you can also connect to it without an app, um, and you can just use a browser, and all you got to put is this IP address, this number that you see down the bottom. In my case, it's 192.168.2.166. If you put that in the address where you normally put your www address, uh, it will connect you to... Uh, to this particular instance of Capture One. So we'll go back to the basic here and all we gotta do is click on Start Server. Now I'm recording uh, what I see on my iPad at the moment and I'm about to launch the 
um, the Capture Pilot app, and hopefully I'll be able to put my iPad recording on a on the bottom right hand screen, I think, and uh, so you can see both simultaneously. Hopefully, this, this that'll work. So I'm just launching the app now, and it's asking me. Uh, it, it does the launch screen and it's asking me to select a catalog. So I'm just going to select the top catalog, uh, which is the one that I'm using at the moment, as you can see. And already the image is visible on my iPad. And all I got to do now is I can take, I can grab another photograph. Okay, uh, if I can just get it to uh, focus and it will take another photograph. It's exactly the same, but let me change something here so that it looks a little bit different. Let's go to ISO um, 200 and let's. Um, Let's change these to uh, 2.2 and uh, let's do, that. that's probably enough actually, let's do that. Grab another photograph and you can see there that it's just a little bit darker. Let's go even to ISO 100 so you can see that it really is capturing um, fresh images. Okay, so there's a much darker one. And you'll notice that on the iPad itself, the images are coming through. Now, the great thing about the app, the app is that you can do all sorts of things like rate images and so forth. So if you've got an art director or you've got the client there with you, they can pull out their iPad or you can give them one of yours and they can go in there and rate the images that they like. So this works really, really well. And as you can see, it's super easy. I'm already connected to Capture One. All I'm doing is leveraging what Capture One already does, and it's automatically just sending it out to these um, to the Capture Pilot application. Okay, so super, super easy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the iPad, and I am going to exit the um, the app, and I'm just now going to go to a web browser. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the browser, and I'm actually going to type in the address that you saw here before on the web, which is uh, in, in this particular case, it's 192.168.2.2.166. Now bear in mind that it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a different number for you, okay? So this is just the number that it's given me. It generates an IP address, a, a, an address number uh, randomly or it, it does it on its own and it will give you the IP address. So you need to put in the one that you see, not this one here. Um, and when it does, it just opens up a web page. So what Capture One is doing is it's um, it's putting, it, it has a web uh, server built into it and it's just serving out the images so you'll be able to see it. Now you don't have as much uh, control when you use uh, the web browser function as you do when you use the app, but um, it is a really, it's a really, really handy thing to have when for some reason somebody cannot um, install something on their iPad, maybe it's not theirs, and, uh, and uh, so this is just a quick and easy thing and, it, and they don't have to install anything. And it does give you the option to change the, the size of the images. You can click on the image and, uh, and it will expand the image and then you can, you can rate it, okay? So you can give the image a rating and so forth. Um, and, uh, but personally, I think if you're going to do this, you may as well use the, um, the app if you can, because I think that the app gives you way more functionality than the, uh, than the web browser function. Um, and uh, so there are options to control the camera as well from the app, but that is, uh, that is, uh, there is a cost to that as well. As you can see in here, it's telling me because I don't have it, it's saying that it could be uh, $22.99 in this case. Uh, so if you did that, then you would have the ability to then control the camera from the iPad as well. But most of the time, the reason why you have uh, the iPad is just to uh, to be able to show other images as well. So you don't have a lot of people just crowded over the top of you. Uh, it, it's a really uncomfortable way to work. Uh, so that's it. As you can see, super easy, okay, and uh, and super simple. And you can do you can do this with iPads. You can do it with uh, Android. You can do it on a phone or on a tablet. Um, it's super super handy. So. That's it. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. And uh, hopefully you were able to follow along and uh, you found this useful.
And again, the reason I use Capture One is because I'm not introducing any physical product into the whole equation. I'm already plugged into Capture One. That's how most studios work these days. And so all you're doing is just switching something on and then you don't have to bring any dedicated iPads or computers or iPhones or anything to give out to your uh, art directors or your clients. They can just use their own phone, their own iPads, whatever. You just give them an IP address, they connect to it, and then they're just not bothering you. They can just use their own thing and they can see all the images as they're coming in. So hopefully you were able to follow along. But if you do have any questions, the comment section below is probably the best place to get in touch with me. Um, or if you've got any comments as well. Otherwise, you can just reach out on any of the normal social media platforms. You're going to find all the links in the description below. Uh, so if you do have any questions or comments, please make sure that you reach out. And guys, if you like this video, if I could just ask you to hit the like button, it makes a massive difference to me and to the channel because it shows me that I'm making the kind of videos that you enjoyed watching. So uh, please give the video a like if you enjoyed it or you learned something or you found it useful. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. And uh, so if you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll find out when I make a new video. And just lastly, before I finish up, I want to remind you about ministryofphoto.com. Uh, that's my website where you're going to find links to most of my videos. Uh, there's also some tutorials, some downloads, and some presets for Lightroom. It's all completely free, so make sure you go check it out. That's ministryofphoto.com. So that's everything for this video. I hope you found it useful. Again, please don't forget to give the video a like. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I will see you in the next video.